Welcome to the Flexicraft Industries introduction to expansion joints and all our flexible piping solutions. Flexicraft has 50 years of experience, and during that time, we've been committed to perfecting our offerings of metal and rubber expansion joints and other flexible piping elements of every type. This puts us in an excellent position to provide perspective for helping you to choose the ideal products, and perhaps even more important, how best to use them. You can find detailed information on each product at flexicraft.com after first choosing the appropriate product family. This video presentation will briefly cover the main choices, but we also have short video presentations with a few more details available for each of the product families of metal joints, rubber joints, and braided flexible connectors and flexible loops. In addition to the main options for products in these families, we will cover some important background information, including the thrust load concept. The proper and full understanding of thrust load and how it helps us determine which product to use for your application and how it can affect your piping system is a critical insight at the center of all flexible piping solutions. We hope this presentation will be helpful and that you find the topic at least half as interesting as we do. Okay, let's get started. The first and probably the most involved flexible piping solution product family to get familiar with is this one, metal expansion joints. A solid understanding of these joints will help us to explain the thrust load concept with better context before moving on to the other products. Metal joints are primarily needed for thermal expansion of piping. If straight pipe sections between pipe anchors expand without added flexibility, the loads on the anchors will likely be too much for the system to withstand. We see here a model of a pipe run with anchors on either end. Note that the anchors are shown close together just for visualization here in our pipe system model, but in any real system, they would be very far apart. If we first remove the anchors and the pipe heats up, as indicated by the rising thermometer level, the pipe grows as shown. When the pipe anchors are added and the pipe again heats up and begins to expand, the immense thermal load on the anchors will build until they fail. Now when we add an expansion joint between the anchors, as the pipe heats up and expands, the joint compresses to compensate for the movement and there are now minimal thermal loads on the anchors and pipe. Although applications are not always this straightforward, most are a variation of what we see here. Adding metal joints is often a key way to handle expanding hot pipes. Metal joints usually have a stainless steel bellows with multiple corrugations that provide them with the ability to move. They can achieve long lives even in the higher temperatures and pressures of demanding systems, such as steam and many others. The bellows are manufactured by mechanical forming methods, or preferably through hydroforming, as shown here. Hydrostatic pressure from inside the tube forces convolutions into the dies, shaping the bellows. Residual stresses that can contribute to stress corrosion cracking are minimized with hydroforming. Usually either flanges or pipe weld ends are then welded to the bellows, which turns it into an expansion joint. There are three movements that the joints can make. Axial compression or extension, lateral offset, and angular deflection. As we have demonstrated, the most common movement is axial compression, due to a straight run of pipe heating up. But solutions and planning for other movements may be needed as well. And there are different types of metal joints, with different options to consider. Simple single bellows joints are the most common, such as the Flexicraft Single Model NLC. The bellows are usually stainless steel, while the ends are most commonly carbon steel, depending on the piping material. Primary options for this type of joint include liners and covers. Liners are usually slipped in to provide either erosion protection or for high flow rates to prevent flutter. Covers protect the thin bellows from potential damage where that may be a concern. The optional tie rods limit the extension and sometimes the compression of the joints. The rods loosely fit through holes and lugs that are welded to the flanges or weld ends at Flexicraft's factory and knots on the rods prevent them from going through the lugs. Although the single bellows joints are the most common, they do not move very far in lateral offset. For large lateral movements, a universal configuration with two bellows is needed. 
The longer the center pipe spool, the more lateral movement is possible, as we see here. Longer axial compression from thermal expansion than a single bellows joint can provide is often beneficial and can be supplied by externally pressurized metal joints, such as the Flexicraft Model EP. Because the housing allows the system's fluid to pressurize the bellows from the outside, it is more stable and can be made longer to allow considerably more compression. So, quite a few different configurations and options are available with metal expansion joints, the most important of which we've seen. In a moment, we'll go over rubber expansion joints and braided metal products. But first, Paul Berg from Flexicraft has an overview of the critical concept of thrust load that applies to all pressurized flexible elements. Now that we've added some context with an overview of metal expansion joints, we can take a moment to go over the often misunderstood an important topic of pressure thrust load. This new anchor support load can be difficult to understand at first, but it's critical to both the choices between products and also how they're applied. When you add an expansion joint to a pressurized piping system, you are introducing this new pressure thrust load to the piping anchors. This new force on the anchors is a main reason why you shouldn't just cut a hole in an existing pipeline and add an expansion joint even though the large thermal anchor loads from the pipe growth would be minimized. So what exactly is pressure thrust load? To understand it, we can start by looking at a bendable straw example, where the bending section represents an expansion joint. If one end of the straw is plugged, and if we could blow into the other end hard enough, what we would see is the bendable section getting stretched out. The force on the plug from the pressure would force apart the bendable section, but not stretch the rest of the stiff straw. That pressure force acting on the plug is the thrust load, and is equal to the pressure times the cross-sectional area. We can now go back to our pipe system model, at first without the anchors. This time we pressurize the pipe instead of heating it up. The pipe acts as though it's plugged with the thrust load acting on both ends because of elbows and other ends down the line. Notice there is no movement of the pipe because the pipe wall is too stiff to be moved by the thrust load. But if we cut a hole in the same pipe and add an expansion joint, we have a model like the bendable straw. Now when we again pressurize the unanchored system, we can see the joint will stretch out to failure because it's not stiff like the pipe. When we now add back the pipe anchors and again pressurize, the joint does not stretch out from the thrust load because the anchors are preventing that. But if the anchors are not designed to withstand the new load, they can fail and consequently then allow the joint to stretch out and also fail. Tie rods are sometimes added as an attempt to absorb the thrust load so the anchors don't have to. The issue with this approach in a straight pipe run is that if the joint compresses, the nuts attached to the rods will separate from the lugs. When they separate, they no longer shoulder the load. So trying to use tie rods to handle the thrust load only works if axial movement isn't needed. And we have seen this isn't the case much of the time when thermal pipe growth is involved. Let's take a look at this on our pipe model. We see the pipe system first get pressurized quickly before heating up. At this point, the tie rods are working to absorb the thrust load so the anchors don't have to. But when the system starts to heat up, the tie rods disengage from the lugs as the joint compresses, and the thrust load gets transferred to the anchors, possibly causing them to fail as before. So what is the solution to the new pressure thrust load? Well, one solution is to simply ensure the anchors are large enough to withstand it, as we see them getting larger here. Now when the pressure and temperature both rise, the system works as it should. So the anchors must be designed for the force of the thrust load, which is equal to the effective cross-sectional area of the bellows multiplied by the pressure. In addition to the thrust load, a second load, the spring load, is added to the anchors when the joint moves, which is equal to the joint spring rate times the movement. The spring load is usually considerably smaller than the thrust load, and it normally does not cause the confusion thrust load often does. 
The effective area and spring rate parameters of the joints are listed in our tables and submittal sheets for our various models. These are normally required input parameters for computer piping models when using joints, but the loads can also be simply calculated by hand. I hope that this explanation of thrust load helps to put the use and design of these products into better perspective. Now let's take a look at the rest of FlexiCraft's flexible piping solutions, starting with rubber expansion joints. Rubber joints are made with various rubber elastomers with different properties. Most of the common elastomers are rated between 200 and 250 degrees Fahrenheit, so they are not used in steam or other very hot systems. They are still used for thermal expansion of piping, but are also popular for initial piping misalignment and settlement lateral offsets, and also for pump and other equipment vibration absorption. They can move in all three directions and are made with layers of rubber and fabric, similar to tires. There are two main rubber joint styles, spools and spheres. Spheres, such as the FlexiCraft Ultra Spheres, are economical and are popular as flexible pump connectors. They have thick metal flanges, often with tapped flange holes, and a rubber lip. Spools, such as the FlexiCraft Ultra Spools, have a robust design with full rubber flanges and metal backing rings. The backing rings are split and easily removable. They have arches that can be filled to provide a smooth bore, or additional arches can be added for greater movements. Integral Teflon liners are also available that conform to the arch. Tie rods, as part of control units, are often used to control the thrust load. Unlike tie rods for metal joints that are welded to the joint flanges or ends at the FlexiGraph factory, rubber joint rods must be installed in the field. After the joint is placed in the pipeline breech and partially bolted up, the gusset plate lugs parts of the control unit are bolted on the outside of the mating flanges to complete the installation. For more information and options, see our rubber expansion joint video and catalog. Braided flexible connectors are the next product family to explore at FlexiCraft.com. The braided connector is composed of a short braided flexible hose section that consists of a stainless steel corrugated piece sheathed in a stainless steel braid. Bronze is also available in smaller diameters. These are referred to only as flexible connectors because they are not technically an expansion joint. That is to say they are not meant for axial compression or extension because of the braid but the braid does provide an advantage. Primarily, the braid can withstand the thrust load because of its axial stiffness and extension. The braid essentially acts like tie rods. And because these are most often used on pumps and other equipment as flexible connectors, eliminating the thrust load on the equipment nozzles, which act as anchors, is often critical to pump performance. Although they cannot absorb thermal growth compression, they can move for lateral offset and absorb vibration well. Flexible pipe connectors are usually either braided metal types or spherical rubber joints with tie rods as previously discussed. Finally, let's look at the ML flexible loops. Like our straight braided flexible connectors, our flexible loops are made with corrugated braided metal hose, but with two independent legs, they can move in all three directions exceptionally well, including axial compression and extension. This, combined with the fact that the braid absorbs a thrust load, makes them a key alternative in situations where thrust load may be difficult for anchors to handle. The lack of thrust load combined with larger movements in all three directions also makes them key for absorbing seismic movements. We can illustrate the advantages the flexible loops have in a thermal expansion application. The lack of thrust load and low spring load on the anchors compared to a metal expansion joint and the reduction of space and extra insulation work compared to a hard pipe loop are significant. This example is explained further in the ML loop and flexible braided connectors, braided flexible elements video, and also in the catalogs. That covers the basic choices and considerations for expansion joints and other flexible connectors. We hope you found this informative and that you'll think of FlexiCraft as the first name in flexible piping solutions. Be sure to check out our other videos, especially if your need is specific to one type. We would love to hear from you with any questions and to consult with you on your applications. 
If you are writing specifications, be sure to check out our specification assistance on each product page, which include helpful insights. And finally, if you have a need to extend your flexible piping solutions to any type of industrial hose, please see the website for our division, Hosecraft USA, at www.hosecraftusa.com. Thanks again for your attention and consideration. We hope to work with you soon.